Hello and welcome to episode 15. This is 15, right? Yeah, last time was 14, wasn't it, guys? Uh, Yes, this is 15. This is 15. Right. 15 recorded Monday, July 23rd, 2012. I am Adam Pulowski. Uh Joining me this week is, of course, Mrs. Shojo Sarah Miller. How you doing, Sarah? I'm doing great. Awesome. And, of course, right next to her is... The ever awesome Duras, aka Mr. Robert O'Mara. Hello, sir. How you doing? I'm here. How you doing? You're awesome too. Oh, Don't sell God. yourself short. I'm awesome. Everyone's awesome. <laughs> and everyone awesome. listening is awesome. Exactly. Yes. Oh, people who are listening are even more awesome. And of course, last but not least, is Mr. Jeff Philomek, whom we refer to in game affectionately as Max. Hello, sir. Hey guys, happy to be here. Awesome. So we got a jam packed show, so we're not gonna dilly dally, guys. Um news. Anybody hear any news last week? Anything big happen? Okay. I don't wanna say <laughs> The restructuring work con- is continuing. Yes, that I guess that's the best way to put it. So yeah, we uh, we recorded our show Monday night, and there were a couple of uh, things that came up that required me to kind of give the show a bit more of a once over, um, editing wise. So I put it off, putting it out till Tuesday, and then Tuesday morning, word starts spreading across the internet that more layoffs at Bioware. And by midday, we're seeing. Eighty percent of Bioware staff is laid off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, slight <laughs> exaggeration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, slight. so let's get the facts out of the way. Uh, after some hemming and hawing, a few hours go by. Uh, there is indeed confirmation from EA that there have been another round of layoffs. However, as a, and this is right from the press release. As announced in May and detailed at E3, the BioWare Austin team is refining Star Wars The Old Republic to continue to grow the game and the service. As with the launch of any MMO, the size and skill set of the team needed to maintain the game is different than the ones that built it. Starting in May, there have been staff reductions in the BioWare Austin studio. And goes on to talk about how the, what they're doing for those folks who are letting go. BioWare Austin, it continues, BioWare Austin is currently staffed to ensure the continued delivery of new high-quality game content for the Old Republic and at a more frequent cadence. This is getting glossed over a lot by people. In the weeks ahead, we will announce plans for growing Swator with new content, new players, and here's the interesting part, new ways to play. Dun, dun, dun. So what we have sussed out, and if someone has more info, but what we have sussed out is we appear to have lost about eight community members, uh, community team members. These are folks who are either probably customer service, handling Twitter, um, mm-hmm. you know, th- the front forum line. Forum mods, co- et cetera. Exact forum yeah. mods, exactly. Um, and two writers were let go, uh, Joe Barry and Cameron Harris. Um Joe Barry is most known publicly for having kind of written the whole of the counselor storyline. Uh, Cameron Harris was the managing editor on story content. So, uh, also not related to these layoffs, but over the last couple of weeks, uh, George Zoller and Rich Vogel, uh, both left voluntarily and were not a part of the restructuring. So they, they decided they were moving on to other things for whatever reasons personally. Um, outside of this stuff going on. So, um, what do you guys think? Uh, I'm not worried. <laughs> no, I don't think it's a big deal at all. In no. fact, looking over the course of the past week, there was a blip in interest around this the day it happened, and I saw it just sort of die off since then. Yeah, I, yeah, don't, yeah. I don't think it's that big a thing. No, I It's certainly not as big yeah. as the first round of layoffs they did. I mean, this is, right. again, just them continuing to, quote-unquote, trim the fat. Uh, as I said, it's a it's a different ball game now. The game's out there, and if we even hearken back to, well, not quite a year ago, right? But you know, when the game was released, even mm-hmm. before the game was released, how they were talking about, oh no, we're set. We have our release content done. We're well into designing for the next expansion. I mean, they have stuff. Yeah, stuff's mapped there. Out, like, I mean, content's they're, they're yeah. not well like they're starved out. for content. They have plenty of that there. It's just that. They're refining their team. They're they're trying to stay profitable, and uh, still continue to deliver us the content uh, that'll 
make us play the game for years to come. And if yeah. people want to play the wait and see game, then play the wait and see game. But in the meantime, there's no reason to believe anything else is going to happen other than yep. what they claim is going to happen. And again, uh, you may not, you know, I know a lot of folks play MMOs and like, I just like this one class. I want to do everything in this one class. And, you know, we've talked about in other episodes, um, there are eight class stories in this game. And as I'm coming to the end of my smuggler playthrough, I'm realizing I'm more excited now about seeing more of the story I've already seen played out on the consular through these other eyes because I am getting more story. I'm getting different pieces of the puzzle and there's a bigger story being told that gets grander and richer. It seems the further you go with other class stories. So uh, I'm really enjoying that. And there's a lot to do there. I get that, you know, some just want the next new thing, next ops, next this, next that, but there is a lot in the game to enjoy. So uh, Mm -hmm. panic, not panic, not. No, I agree. I think the quote, it has been repeatedly, they have a storyline mapped out for the next 10 years. So, you know, they, they, they know where the stuff's going. They, they know what seeds they're planting for future evolution later on. So, um, what I do want to touch upon really quick before we move on to far more interesting things is, uh, I'm really incredibly annoyed, uh, with the way both quote unquote professional media, um, has been handling sort of covering this and the way a lot of quote unquote supposedly fan sites have been spinning this. Um, mm-hmm. They, like people have just been trying to spin this or were from the, in the short window while folks were still talking about it, uh, is if, oh yeah, this is the death knell of the game. Um, eh, no, uh, I think it's no. the complete opposite. And in fact, yeah. oftentimes in, in large corporations, when there's a reduction in force and a restructuring, the stock goes up. Yeah. And the reason is what it means is there's focus on the business they're taking the right steps. They're being proactive in making sure they're running a profitable profitable business so the thing will continue forever. Yeah. It would be a bigger problem if yeah. they had this huge team and they were hemorrhaging money and not, you know, not restructuring the team to, to be appropriate to what their current task is at hand. That's when the game would fail. You know, uh-huh. they'd have to shut e, 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 you know, EA would have to shut it down. Now, since they've been able to to tune up the team and you know and and make sure they have the right team to to develop the content that they have, they're not doing eight full storylines anymore uh, for for all the classes. Yeah, and they don't need <laughs> if they've got writers <laughs> sitting around doing nothing, nothing to write. You, yeah, you you, you, you get you know they, they, you're done with them. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. sorry, sorry guys. You know you don't want anyone to lose their job. Um, but it's also got to be understandable that there's a development cycle. Um, and when you're done with that development cycle, you either roll staff onto other projects, which is usually what you hope happens. Or mm-hmm. you say, you know, you got the choice. You can try to find another project that we have here or you can, you know, or you can take an exit. And they have packages for these people and yep. exit strategies. So it's a good, good business move, likely. Yes. Um, that last bit in this press release has not gotten a lot of attention. Um, in the weeks ahead, we will announce plans for a growing Star Wars tour with new content, new players, and new ways to play. Do you think free-to-play is coming sooner than we expect? New ways to pay? Play? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is technically what free-to-play ends up doing. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're not going to beat that to death, but do you think we're gonna, that that's why it's been kind of quiet the last couple of weeks? Is Well, I, I think it's quiet for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Uh, we have... And and I think this is also what's kind of bothering the community a little. This is, I think, more than anything, is what got a few people concerned or hesitant about the state of the game, is we have got this community that, if you harken back to years ago, um, have been basically touted as the best community, the most active and loving mm-hmm. fan sites for this game. And now it's a little quieter. The faces have changed. They're busy. They got a lot more work going on now with different staff. They're getting used to their new roles in the company. And it's kind of an unusual quiet in the, in the, uh, in, you know, coming out of Bioware, Austin. Yeah. And it's got some people concerned. Yeah, I will, uh, I will, I will say I agree. Yeah. It has been unusually quiet out of Bioware, Austin. Um, Let's give them a little more time. Yeah. I mean, they, they get their legs under them again and get used to the new processes. Yeah. And, 
in the meantime, you know, we got this we have this game that we can be playing. Oh yeah, and, we and uh, I'm sure we'll see more from them real soon. It's because I I have this sense that they're sitting on something. They're they're waiting to just unleash yes. something upon us. Yes, yes, which is it's also another one. Story. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> So I'm, I'm thinking we might see something from them in the next few weeks, next event perhaps. Mm, yep, which we're all hoping for. Um, so this is not the doom and gloom episode, but we we felt it had to be addressed. That, you know, it just you know we wanted to kind of touch base on it and share some commentary on it. So moving forward, um, I know Duris does like to highlight the weekly Q and A's. For those of you who don't know, they do post a forum. Uh, was forum post they ask folks to respond ask your questions lately they've been more directed um they were originally kind of wide open ask whatever you want now they've been a bit more hey this time around we want you to ask questions about this we feel we can answer more about this uh this round was primarily pvp i believe and uh nothing really jumped out at me except this one and i know it also applies to really the question applies to pve gear as well um uh, Chimera Shot asked, the way campaign gear is set up, some DPS classes have the armoring with more endurance instead of their main stat. Can we expect this change? What was the reasoning behind this? And David Hunt, a system designer, replied, it is an undesired interaction between the distribution of the mods and the move to set bonuses on the armoring. Future gear provides set uh s- provide set mods will use the primary stat over endurance for all DPS classes. So while this was specifically about DPS, I know recently we were having this talk uh in game over just PvE operation gear. We were noticing the Ricotta gear in many cases was suddenly kind of like, hey wait a minute, there's more in like I have less, you know, power or willpower than I used to. Wait, what's going on here? And um so yeah, the- the bad, the uh, black hole upgrades yeah. don't seem like very much of an upgrade in some cases over Ricotta when you're looking at your main stat. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I um, and then campaign follow campaign is a little more reasonable, but even but especially black hole looked weird to me for for my stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. So obviously it's a bit of an oopsie. Um, yeah. But the you know so that's really what the answer is here. Oops, and yeah, we'll fix it eventually. Can't say when. Yeah. Sorry. Thanks for playing. You know, not a, huge, <laughs> not a huge deal, but you know, it's like yeah. maybe they know it's just not game breaking right now, and it's not a huge deal. And the other quick hit in news, something I noticed last week, um, didn't get a lot of attention. Server specific forums are coming this summer. Basically, the word was after they're done with the forced server transfers and they shut down the old servers, uh, mm-hmm. they're going to open up server specific forums. So. What do you guys think about that? There, I see it as a double-edged sword, but I want to hear what you guys think first. Uh, Duras, how about you? I mean, so far as the actual forums, I I think it's a good move. It's uh, we, We're down to, what, one page of server names now, so it's going to help yes. uh, boost the communities on those individual servers to not have to go and filter for your specific server. Yeah, right and, now. Uh, as long as we have a community building up with the group finder and in PVP that's staying server specific, it's we're, we're going to probably see a lot more friends peek up in our friends list and uh, have a little more of a community feel across all the servers. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I like it. It's much more intimate, you know, because I've had lots of experiences with the you know, the people on our server so far. Mm-hmm. And it's been really, it's been really great. And I think that server specific thread is fine with me, especially if you want to keep in touch with a lot of people. And how about you, Jeff? Yeah, I, I haven't much in the past week, but I have looked at the, the uh, server group forums quite a bit and have uh, gone through threads. If you actually look at what's going on in the server group forums right now, a lot of them are turning into basically a server forum. Um, in the mm-hmm. H through K or whatever, it's all Jedi Covenant, and people prefix the the thread yep. with brackets Jedi Covenant. So it's turned into a Jedi Covenant forum. But without it so. being <laughs> just sort of a you know a forum where uh, you can just a one stop look at all the headlines of this is what everyone on your server is talking about. You got to kind of you know you got to fidget with it before you start seeing that you know a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's not just a quick one stop, take a glance, go see what's going on. Um, I agree. This is where 
a lot of time, yeah, I'll be honest, I have the, 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 the majority of my financial transactions have happened in server specific trade forums more so than ever spamming anybody in the game. Um, uh, I've made more friends that way. I've certainly made my share of enemies that way. And this is the double edged sword to the whole thing. Here's the downside. It does make it easier to call out people for both the right and the wrong reasons. But mm-hmm. it, a lot of times that can turn into a great big pile of comparing EPs, <laughs> you know, especially when it comes to PVP. Uh, those th- that stuff yes. can get heated very quickly. Yeah, um, having a, a server specific place to call, you know, poo poo butt twenty three out for being you know a numb nut can be bo- you know have a lot of detrimental effect. This will create, well, maybe not. With it being just a handful of servers now, maybe it won't be as much of a moderation issue. Um, I was surprised they didn't open these to begin with, but in hindsight, they did open so many servers. That would be a bit of a pain in the butt. So um, it will make creating events for the server a lot easier because it doesn't just depend Mm. on who you know in game to get word out about that. You know, you can post, hey, you know, AIE and Diamond Club want to present, you know, the carnival of fun and here's what we're doing and everybody meet here and, you know, hopefully we don't crash the server, you know. World PvP! <laughs> yeah, ex- or, yeah, exactly. Host world PvP events. Coordinate that stuff. Um, absolutely. So, I, I, all around, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, we'll address, again, more of the, how do we deal with the, the knuckleheads. And, and since we are a, you know, there's more people in our sandbox, but we're all in a tight knit sandbox. So, yeah. Um, before we get to that, uh, I know Max wanted to talk some PvP. You guys got some PvP questions. Um, yeah. So I'm going to turn the show over to Jeff over there and uh, let you guys go wild. So what do you got going on over there, Jeff? All right, I'll just start with a little bit of an update, and we can we can talk about some some stuff that's going on. And if there, if there are any questions we want to toss around, I've been my my main is my Vanguard Trooper. Um, I have recently switched from assault spec or to to assault spec from shield spec. I like the utility of of shield. I was thirty one ten um, for people that are are familiar with that, but it's more of a tank in PvP. Um, yeah. But assault is really um, has quite a bit more damage associated with it, and not that many downsides. Um, a tank is still useful in a well coordinated ranked group, but in solo groups or just in general um, PvP groups, assault's really the spec to play. And that's that's what all the cool kids play. So, oh really? Is that the flavor that... of the month? Uh, yeah, t- to some degree. The other thing was in PVE, I'm mm-hmm. I've assumed a mostly DPS role, so I can stay assault and gotcha. really learn a good power rotation, gotcha. uh, laying down the damage in PvP, and it translates into what I do in PVE as well. Gotcha. So that's the assault tree on on the commando, or is this Vanguard? Well, I, I'll, uh, I'll, we we can talk about that in a second on my mercenary, um, because they're the same, they're a shared tree. Um, they are slightly oh, okay. different between the two classes, uh, the the way you play the 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 beast, but uh, the, the, <laughs> that is the shared tree. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, so on my Vanguard, I I hit Valor rank eighty. Um, is that so the cat? Holy crap! Is that the cat? <laughs> That's Conqueror. Um, so Conqueror Max. Is, is rank 80 the cap? No. Uh, I don't think there is a cap. It goes up oh. to 100 with titles. 90 is another title, and I think that's Warlord, and 100, I think, is Elite Warlord. Oh, and wow. it's it's a curve. Um, I don't expect to... I mean, it'll be a while before I hit 81, let alone 90. What's the, um, what's the Valor <laughs> rank for uh, Cattle Master? <laughs> <laughs> so... so I, what so he's referring what he's referring to is in the show notes for a few hours today. Somewhere along the way, he the cha- the spelling of battle master in our show notes changed to cattle master. Cattle master. <laughs> and this started a rather funny exchange in the uh, IM and Google Docs and. Uh, yeah, I unlocked the cow level. See, and, uh, <laughs> this is cow <laughs> level, and I am now the cattle master. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I I did hit battle master on my mercenary. Um, I, I wanted to do that for a couple reasons. One, my, my main reason was I wanted 
to it to look cool. I, want, okay. I wanted to get some gear. I wanted to get some Battlemaster gear, and I wanted him to look cool. Um, which leads me to one thing I'm going to talk about in a second: why he does not look cool yet. Um, okay, so so mercenary is sort of the mirror. It's the commando. It's sort of the mirror advance class, the alternate advance class to either the trooper or the uh, um, bounty hunter. Um, I do use an assault spec, a, a similar kind of assault spec on my mercenary, which means you're relying on proccing your rail shot to do your your sort of your burst damage. Okay. Um, however, uh, the way you play uh, either a, a power tech or a vanguard, um, you you're, you're up close and personal, and you're using an insta cast ability. Your uh, ion your ion blast, I, I forgot exactly what it's called, um, to, 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 to proc your rail shot, your burst, um, and you don't get that with, with Mercenary. So in, in, in theory, Mercenary Commando um, does just as much, if not more, damage than their Vanguard Power Tech counterparts, um, but especially in PvP when you have to move a lot and your two alternate shots, your, your power shot and your... Um, and your uh, unload um, are channeled, and you need to sort of, or have a cast time, and you need to stand still to do yeah. it. Um, right. It's hard to get those off very often, yeah. and it can be a little <laughs> frustrating. Um, so, if I had, a ch- if I could, I would make my, I would have, I would respect my mercenary to power tech. Um, I just like the way that plays better. I have a lot of fun with that class, and I like the. Uh, the versatility. So people in general t- talk about uh, mercenary commando being slightly underpowered. Um, they can still lay down the damage though, and nobody should be um, um, too worried about them not being useful. And in in PVE, they they totally lay down the damage, so there's no there's no issues there. Yeah, and I mean they have the they have the utility of, of the healing, right? Whereas your power tech is mostly. I mean, there's no healing tree for that, is there? Yes, correct. So mercenary and commando can become healers in PvP, which, as long as you're playing with a group, are in, intensely in you know very very valuable. Um, if you're not playing with a group, if you're solo queuing, um, playing a solo queuing healer in PvP can be a little bit frustrating. Uh, it's great <laughs> to have them the out there. <laughs> yeah. You get, I mean, you get marked, and you don't have, you know, team members who know you who are doing the right things to peel attackers off of you and protect you and guard you. And so remember, business. if you're going to heal or queue as a healer, bring some punching bags. Yes. yes. Queue, queue with at least one other person who's either DPS or, or tankish spec, and coordinate between the two of you. Um, I, you know, if I can get a healer backing me up, I'll always, uh, you know, be taunting off of that healer. And peeling people, you know, harpooning people away from that healer, and keeping that healer alive while that healer is keeping me alive, and yeah. that's a good combo. Yeah, pocket healer. So speaking of PvP, um, I see in here here in the notes, it seems like everybody has rolled a trooper recently for one reason or another. Or I see both Duris and Trojo are saying here, you guys, are, yes, my trooper is my PvP tune. Um, why? Why that over something else? <laughs> well, because I already have a DPS tune. I have my smuggler. Okay. Then I have my healer. So yeah. I'm not going to make a tank because I can't. I'm not a tank type person. I will yell at people. So <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to make her my PvPer because I haven't really tried PvP yet, like fully. And gotcha. so I really want to level her up and try it with my trooper. But you went. Um... You went commando on your trooper, right? Yeah, I went. I went commando. So that's why I was like, "Well, did I choose the wrong tree then?" Because I kind of made up this decision like a few days ago when I was playing her. Well, playing a uh, again, playing a, a, a vanguard trooper is a little more tanky in the way you got to play it. So you'll be you'll be comfortable with sort of the DPS style of a commando, I think. And then if you right. want to go heals, you know, I'll you know I'll bring you along any day. Yeah, I know. I was thinking like, well, shall I go healer then? <laughs> yeah, I I tried healing on my on my mercenary, um, and I was terrible at it, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> um, it it's, it's somewhat of a complicated uh, rotation that you do need to learn. And solo queuing got really frustrated to try to learn it, so I just switched over to DPS. But 
as I said, um, very, very valuable. I'd love to have a, uh, some more healers plan. So uh, here's a here's a question I have then, um, and then we'll probably move on, wrap it up, and move on to our next topic here. Um, if someone's like, oh, I haven't PvP'd, but they're thinking about trying it, and maybe they have a couple different classes rolled, but they don't know a lot of folks who are doing it, what is a good class combo to roll if you are going to be solo queuing, for example? Hmm. Um, I would say the 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 tankier. Um, the 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 tankier classes that are that are straight up damage, um, ju- you know, Juggernaut, even Marauder to some degree, Power Tech, Vanguard. Those those are easier to play with a little bit more survivability. That it's going to be a little bit easier to to figure out what's going on and and not have to to really rely a ton on specialized mechanics or positioning to get the most out of it. Um, classes like um, the Gunslinger and Sniper um, can be very powerful in PvP, but have some specialized mechanics that you need to get used to in terms of cover and when to stay in cover and when not to stay in cover and what the drawbacks and, and pros and cons are. Um, I don't know. I, f- I found Inquisitor, Consular, DPS, like Sage DPS and Sorcerer DPS to be pretty easy to play, um, but you are a little bit squishy, so you need to know how to run away. And, and when, <laughs> yeah, when to hold them, no when to fold them. Yeah, and, well, isn't that the key to any PvP, especially like these war zones with objectives? Like, you know, people need to remember you're supposed to be focusing on the objectives, not individual kills. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, right. there are ways to win and get better gear um, in these things without being the leadest killer of the group. You know, so, um, uh. Doris, how about you? You got anything you want to throw in here? Well, then, bear in mind that if you are running for your your uh, life in a in a war zone, know your terrain. I mean, go around <laughs> that column. Make them come after you. You might be able to slip down a ramp and throw a heel before they come to finish you off. It's yep. Pillar you know, don't don't try to just run around. You know, serpentine, serpentine. No, go behind <laughs> a pillar. Okay, jump down a ramp. Change levels on them. Yeah, it's, I do that uh, much more in my mercenary than on my vanguard. But pillar humping, um, and especially for a healer, is is a, a very valuable skill. Did you say pillar humping? Yes, yes he did, and it's, it's appropriate. <laughs> that's what it's called. So, so Durius, you go in commando, right? Everyone's going commando. <laughs> I think he's going commando <laughs> right now. But what what uh, advanced class are you playing, though? That's what I want. Did you see what I did there? Yeah. I yes, see what you did there. Going, <laughs> going <to my> house. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, I enjoy him. He's actually uh, that was actually my first well my first character, and then I rerolled him when I unlocked the chess. But uh, I, I I love my trooper. I like my tank too. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, uh, I, I like the healing aspect. I have a tank, so I wasn't really interested in that advanced class. So I figured this way I'll have the utility to do t- uh, do DPS and heals. So long as I can spec appropriately, because uh, I don't think I'm going to have the time to level two more characters. So I'll, I'll take one who can DPS or heal. Yeah. So naturally, I'm looking for that uh, that mythical dual spec, you know, where we can actually have them set and swap between the two. In the meantime, I'm just spending a lot of money and a lot of time uh, running back to fleet to uh, or using field uh, field respecs right to. Yeah. To set to set things up. Yeah, let me let me touch on the the one other thing about my uh, mercenary and why I drove to to Battlemaster and what burned me twice that people need to keep an eye out for. And I, I wrote this up in detail on my site, but just bears worth worth saying if you're th- you're looking at that new social gear and you want to move mods, um, campaign mods and war hero mods, you can move to social gear and keep the set bonuses. The set bonuses do not transfer for any other mods anywhere else besides Campaign and War Hero. The other thing, which burned me the second time and cost cost me another 300k credits okay. to pull all the mods out again. Was, <laughs> Did you do it again? <laughs> no, no. The, the crafted... So you can buy a, a set of, of schematics to make the, the Battlemaster gear appropriate to your class. 
and you can construct all that. And if you crit, you get an augment slot. And hey, that seems pretty useful. And then you can take the mods from your from your Battlemaster purples that you bought off the PvP vendor, and put them in the crafted piece with the augment slot, and put an augment in. And hey, doesn't that look great? Except there's no set bonuses on the orange shells that you create off those Battlemaster schematics, and the mods do not bring the set bonus over either. Yeah. Whoops. So now is this an oversight? The bonus, do they know uh, about this? Are they going to fix it? No, or is it not. working as intended? I think it, I, th- I think it works as intended, but I think that was a mistake. Ouch. For the crafted yeah. set, they should have put the set bonuses on the shell. Um, Crafters need that kind of love. I mean, yeah, you can't you can't even wear that set until you hit Valor rank sixty, which is why I, you know. So so I hit Valor rank, you know, I hit fifty. I I moved the mods, Battlemaster mods, into my cool Imperial Trooper uniform and realized, oh crap, I lost the set bonus. Then, oh. I, then I thought, okay, well, I'll get to 60, I'll wear the orange shells. So you have to be Valor rank 60 anyway to wear it. They should have put the set bonuses on the shells. Anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> be mindful twice. of that. In other, oh. words, in other words, folks, PvP, PvE, when in doubt, check with one mod first before you do it with all your mods at the same time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my set <laughs> bonuses? <laughs> yeah. It was totaled about 800k uh, credits ah! by the time I got my mods all the way back to the original purple pieces that I bought off the PPV. Oh, wow. Well, gosh. the next time you want to throw away 800k, you know where <laughs> to find me. the tourists. <laughs> got, it. got it. All right. So we before we move on to feedback, we have one thing we want to uh, bring up. We, we've been talking about the group finder the last couple of weeks. Um for the most part, I have had a fairly positive experience with the group finder. You know, there have been times where it's taken longer than others. Um, I think the problem really is still people aren't using it. Uh, they're still using stupid group chat to f- fill groups instead of using that thing. Um, I literally sat there all weekend on my healer trying to get into a story mode ops and never popped once oh, as a healer. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so that was that struck me as a little odd. Like that that was off on on prime time on the weekend that should have been happening no problem. Um but with that said, um there have been some very frustrating experiences too and we just thought we wanted to kind of throw down sort of our do's and don'ts. So we're just going to kid in, say what we got to say and get out. I'm not going to belabor the point, but we have th- I I know I have and I think Shojo has too thought about this at great lengths. So um, tell you what, I'll, I'll start here. So say hello. Do say hello. Here's the do's. Do say yeah. hello. I do not expect your life story from you or for you to be all chatty. But if we're going to spend the next 40 minutes to an hour running content together, the least you can do is say hi. Right. You know, that's it. You know, hey, you know, it, that's it. You know. Yeah. Uh, and if it's yeah, not too much exactly. to ask at the end of the run, a slash hog, I mean, that would make my day. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. No, I'm not going to suggest you have to slash hug people. Believe it or not, I've seen people get virtually you know, weirded out about the virtual. Oh, it's space. It's, it's optional. I'm, I'm not requiring. Hug. But by all means, do say thank you for the group. Uh, at the very least, before you quit the group and move on to go do what you're going to do, ask if anyone is new to the content, and then adjust the pace accordingly. So, in other words, I, I have gotten into groups where it's very clear everyone knows what they're doing. This is yeah. not new to anybody. We're just going to bang, bang, bang. And if you've done something multiple times, it should not be a problem for you, even if you are running on a new role from what you've done it before. Right. It shouldn't be a big deal. But if you do have someone that's new, you're going to have to slow down, adjust accordingly. You know, remember, you had your first experience at that content already. And if it was your first time in there, you would not want to feel like you were just struggling just to keep up with the three people who have already done this 50 times. So you know, be mindful of that. Uh, just, just be polite, you know, say your please and thank yous. Um, you know, some people will ask, oh, can I please roll for this? You know, and it's something that they need. Of course, they're just asking. That's fine. You know, um, just be, just be polite. Don't, don't be cursing like a sailor and, you know, (laughs) and like, just, just be a brat. Yeah. Remember the game's a great equalizer. It's, uh, we, we all meet up in this virtual space, um, you know, not that, you know, maybe there might be listeners of the show who have grouped with us and not known it through Group Finder. Um, you know, we'll be, you <laughs> yeah. know, because we're just hanging out doing our thing. You know what I mean? We're just yeah. playing the game and, um, it is a great, you know, I mean, I know there's, you know, it's just, you never know 
where someone is coming from on the other side of the keyboard. So just be civil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, be respectful of class roles. The reason why I say this is because, you know, sometimes there's DPS. I think that they're all that in a bag of chips and they don't let the tank do his job. Mm -hmm. And so, which makes the healer's job even harder because he's trying to heal the DPS who thinks is a tank and the tank can't tank, you know, it just becomes a big cluster F. Yeah. So it's like, just be respectful of your role. Let the tank tank, you know, you DPS. So the healer is not, you know, panicking in the back, <laughs> trying to keep everybody alive. Yeah, well, you're and, you know, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, and you know, it's just a much smoother run when everybody just knows the role and they do it. Yeah. Um, boom, you know, like, I play like my, my primary role through this game since beta really has been a healer. And right now I'm running around playing DPS and, you know, I do have to kind of put myself in a different headspace of not, you know, worrying about what the healer is doing. Let the healer figure out their role on their own. I'm here to DPS, you know, and be and, good, to, which means that, you know, I have to know when, when I'm supposed to be shooting and when I'm supposed to be waiting for like the tank to grab all the aggro, you know, I, right. I focus on, okay, right now I'm here just to do this, you know, I'm going to sit back and pew pew. Um, yeah. You know, and if you are the tank, be prepared to lead on. Look at your map. You know, what I mean? yes. even if you've never <laughs> been there before, it is your job, not the DPS's, to pull. You know, yeah. you you really are the guy that's supposed to go forward. Go, go. We will all go. follow you. Go. So you no, know, no. learn be to read your map because this uh, in the, along the same vein here. This also means example A. OMG, when I tank this, I could pull more mobs, or you shouldn't tank Ooh. like that, versus option B. Hey, I found that when I tank this, it's helpful to pull this guy and crowd control that guy. Be polite, offer advice, not criticisms. Mm, yeah. Yes. And, and again, yeah. And again, just because you may be the greatest tank in the world, you know, someone might be learning. There's a polite way to present that and the wrong way to present that. So. Uh, do compliment the players are doing a good job. Uh, I'll let Shoujo read that quote. Yeah. Oh, my quote. <laughs> yeah. I like to, you know, compliment people that are doing a good job. You know, hey, Jimmy Bob Healer, you're doing a great job healing, you know, keeping us alive. Yeah. Uh, and they're, you know, that's yeah, what that, I say. that Jimmy Bob Healer guy. He's, uh, that Jimmy he's, Bob Healer. He's all right. <laughs> that Jimmy Bob Healer guy. He's all right. Uh, I've run into this a couple times. Usually when I'm hitting group finder, I'm really interested in doing the content, getting the XP. I am not in there. You know, like I am one of those folks who's been, you know, pulling up all his resources by sending companions on missions. You know, I, I invest my, the credit sink as opposed to the time sink. So usually when I'm running a flashpoint, I'm not super concerned about pulling up resources, but I have seen it already come up a few times. Ask if there are other scavengers or bio engine. What is it? Bioanalysis. Yeah. yeah. What is that? Uh, yeah, plant, picking. <laughs> plant picking. Plant uh, picking. In the group before grabbing scrap metal or weird plants, agree to alternate. Um, you know, it's come up. Oh shoot! I did. You know, like you know, I someone I see just keeps. He's grabbing. He's grabbing. Whatever. Obviously, he needs it. And then occasionally, if there's like a robot next to me, I'll scavenge. You know, because it's right there and I can click without thinking about it. And I've had people say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize, like, oh, don't worry about it, I'm too lazy to really care, you know, I may occasionally yeah. grab one, but help yourself, you know. But, you know, be clear, not everyone's going to be cool, some people may care. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I, I, I was in a group where a guy was just grabbing metal after metal after metal, like, all of them, and I'm sitting there like, hey, dude, you want to share, you know? Yeah. I was just kind of like, what's up, man, I, I, I'm a scavenger too, bro, and he's like, Oh, I don't know. And he's just going off and yeah, go ahead and take the rest. I'm like, okay, that's fine. All right. And our last do, I mean, we'll round out with some don'ts. Um, do put people on ignore that waste your time. Um, folks on your ignore list will not be matched with you in group finder. Um, that's I am great. a firm believer in putting the peer pressure on to be a good member or at least a civil member of our community and apply penalties for those that aren't. It is the only way this works, and it worked beautifully, and it's worked beautifully in other games. Um, and what I mean by this is someone who's just an out, outright, you know, jerk. You know, I mean, we, we've all run into that one every now and then. Usually it's the person, okay. you know, in general chat, you're just throwing on ignore, whatever. Um, but I also means that, you know, uh, you know, if you're three fourths of the way into a run and then you're just like, Oh, sorry, got to bail. Something's come up. Um, Kind of makes you a jerk. 
(laughs) You know, and if someone's just going to, and you say, hey, dude, that's not cool. The boss is right there. We're just about to finish. No, I'm going to bail. Girlfriend's calling. Got to run. Um, is a little different than, hey, I'm sorry, kid just fell down the stairs, cracked head open, I got to run, take her to the hospital. <laughs> it's a little different. It's a little different. Um, the the former is going to get you thrown on my ignore list. The latter will not. Uh, you, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's um, it, there's no reason for that. And that kind of brings us to our don't. So here's how not to end up on my own personal ignore list. And I encourage other folks to really adopt <laughs> this. Because people will learn the lesson if they realize, you'd be surprised how some of the biggest jack butts I've ever run into on a server change their tune. It may take them six months or eight months to get there. When they realize two-thirds of the server has put them on ignore and ain't taking them off anytime soon, guess what? They go, oops, I messed up. They re-roll and try again. You know, uh, and they, uh-huh. and they, and they do a better job of it the second, third time around. Um, so <laughs> this is why I, I suggest this to folks. So don't, Shojo, why don't you grab some of those don'ts for, for me there? Don't. Okay. Do not queue if you're going to remotely think you may have, oh yeah, did you already do this one? May have to run midway through it. Yeah. I mean, exactly. <laughs> don't do that. I just used it as an example of why I would put you on ignore. Absolutely. Don't do yeah. that. Uh, do not queue if you're going away from the com- AFK from the computer. Mm-hmm. I, it, at least, you know, in, in trying to run, run one flashpoint, it will usually take two to three pops before I actually get into one with a group because somebody never acknowledges the panel when it pops up. There's almost always someone that does that. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't always A- pop A-K. up right away. It's not like, oh, well, I missed it. Don't worry. It's going to pop right away, and then other people will get it. I'm not really hurting anyone. It's like, no, really. You're wasting our time. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Seriously, don't do that. <laughs> and if you're like, oh, shoot, I'm going to go run downstairs and grab a drink, take yourself out of the group finder, and then when you come back, put yourself back in it. You, you, odds are you haven't hurt yourself in any major way, you know, so... <laughs> yeah, I do the same thing with PvP. I'll take myself out of the queue if I'm going to step away from the keyboard because I don't want a PvP team to have to start a war zone with, you know, with only seven players. Exactly, it's just not fair to them. Yeah, it's not cool, not cool. And you know, as time goes on, people always know. Like you build that reputation is Max is always there, always on, paying attention, always on. You know what I mean? Like these are the reputations we build over time. You may not think people notice. People oh, notice. they do. We do. We just may not call it out all the time. <laughs> do not. This one irritates me to yeah, no it's end. It's a pet peeve of yours. Do not roll need on gear for your alts and companions. Okay? Uh, the gear, the tune that you're running with, you roll need on the gear that that tune can use. I hate it when people roll need because, oh, my companion can use this. Or, oh, my alt can use this. It's like people have companions and alts too. You know, and just greet it. And if you win it, awesome. Give it to your companion or alt or whatever. Yeah, but by all I means, can't greet stand away. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, with the group finder, odds are very good. You're going to have one of every class or one of every role represented. So odds are pretty good that the gear dropping in that flashpoint is going to be usable by someone who's running that flashpoint for that class, you know. But if it's like, oh, trooper chest dropped and you don't happen to have a trooper and you're like, you know, that would look great on my Kwaizen, feel free to ask. Hey, yeah, you know, ask do you guys mind? You <laughs> I've been looking for a chest plate for Kwaizen. That would look great. Is it cool? Nine out of ten times, I think most folks, as long as you ask ahead of time and they're not like, oh, I wanted that too, are going to be like, sure, whatever, knock yourself out. Yeah. You know? So, so again, it, 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 there's a common theme here. Communication doesn't take a lot, but little things will get you a lot further when you're spending time trying to do content together with people you may not know very well, you know? Uh, I like Shojo's next one here. Do not curse like a sailor. Uh, I'm not <laughs> a sen- other, and this is why you don't do it. I couldn't care less whether you're cursing like a sailor. However, if you are going through the trouble of typing the F word every other word in chat, <laughs> you're probably not the kind of person I'm going to want to add to my friends list when we're done. You know, and right. everyone's going to re- <laughs> respond to that differently, you know. So, um, again, put on a civil face, you know. Um, and I'm going to let you grab the next one there, Shojo. Yeah. 
This one, I had to put a guy on ignore because of this. Yeah. <laughs> but he acted like he was all that in a bag of chips, right? He was going on and on about how great he was, how great his PvP team was, his guild, whatever. Yeah. On and on and on, right? First one dead. He leaves the group calling us noobs and that we don't know how to play. So it's like, boom, okay, ignore, you're gone. Those guys are always the first to die, and it just cracks me up. Uh, and the last one here, do not treat someone like they're a dumb butt noob, as Shoujo likes to say. Reach yeah. out and help if you can. And that kind of just goes back to what we were saying. You know, you don't know where everyone else. Someone might be really experienced with the game, but really new at healing. You know, maybe all they ever played was DPS before, and that can be overwhelming. Or no one's ever tanked before, and, you know, tanking is not always that easy either. And um, and, and we've all been noobs. Yes. Yes, so, we all you know. have. <laughs> yeah. You know, so uh, just be nice to each other out there, folks. Um, for the most part, I have seen more coolness than not on Jedi yes. Covenant, and we'd like to see more of that, so... I think, folks, that's going to be a show. We did run a little long tonight, but uh, I'm not going to be trimming anything. This was a jam-packed episode. Lots in there. Uh, lots to talk about. So normally we try and keep it a little shorter. But before we go, Duras, you want to... I know we were talking about iTunes reviews. What? Um Apparently we got a whole bunch of five-star reviews. So you want to highlight and call out a couple of folks who are nice enough to do that for us, Duras? Yeah, I'm sure, actually. It's uh, it's just always great to, to get any kind of feedback. We, we like the stars. Uh, don't don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. if you have any criticisms, yeah, we, we all wear big boy pants here. We just can, just uh, send we that criticism useful, to uh, us. Don't do it on the <laughs> iTunes review. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it on the iTunes. We want Let us know. Yeah, you can doing, email uh, us the criticism, wanna... but five-star reviews on iTunes. Go. We may go commando, but we wear big boy pants. That's <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> We do wear the big boy pants. But uh, we got uh, three guys here that uh, spoke up. Great show. Fantastic show. New format is great. So thanks. Uh, shout outs to B12N11 Woot, Geeky <laughs> Bob, and Tom Walter. Thanks, guys. Thanks for taking the time to uh, right. let us know that uh, we are giving you what you want. Awesome. Yes. Uh, that has been a resounding theme, actually. Uh, we got a great email, very in depth email that said a lot of nice things. Um, he was new to the game, uh, a fellow named Jason, uh, known as Daytoth, the Bounty Hunter. And I believe he's on Jedi. No, he's not on Jedi Covenant. That was part of his bemoaning in the email is that his friends yeah. were on a different server. Um, really nice email. We want to just acknowledge that we got it. We forwarded it on to everybody on the show. Everyone was really appreciated. But he did ask a specific question towards the end of his email here. Do you know of any community involvement from BioWare at Dragon Con this year? If so, I'll be happy to ask questions, pass along info. Would love to meet any can Cantina Band folks, fans who are going to be there. Um, Dragon Con tends not to be the kind of convention that video game companies show up and hawk their wares. Dragon Con is uh, sort of considered like the Geeks Cons Con. Like this is where the nerds congregate put on their best. Sometimes it can be a little naughty, but it really is about the fans more than it is the big giant corporations going there and showing stuff off. Mm -hmm. um, so I doubt very much BioWare is not there, but if, they, and if they're going to be, they haven't announced anything yet. I, I would be doubtful. Um, as far as community stuff going on down there, uh, we're pro I know I'm not going to be there. However, Brian, who is not with us this week, is going to be there as a guest, as a panelist, and I believe he's going to be doing his uh, legendary NSFW show with uh, Justin Robert Young live from the con this year. So if you're going to be there, you can definitely want to keep an eye out for that. And, um, you know, I'm sure you'll run into a couple of folks down that way who are at least fans of Brian and that community in general. And there's some spillover here. So um, we just wanted to kind of share that along we do have some voicemails hey guys guess what i got i got a whole bunch of uh tonfon codes from one of our spies at uh san diego comic-con <laughs> so Are i was smuggled out of the con smuggled out of the con directly <laughs> sent to us along with my totally awesome republic baseball cap uh from the bioware booth thanks to um 
a Chinook, a.k.a. Andreas Shu. Yay, Chinook. Yeah, Chinook, uh, one of our friends in game and one of my officers. He was nice enough. He was able to wrangle me a hat from BioWare and uh, brought us back a whole bunch of Tonfon codes. So uh, we, I threw out there today, hey, we got more in. Um, I was thinking I'll throw one out this week to the best voicemail. Problem was... We ended up getting, like, three really great voicemails. So here we go, in a row. Ready? Voicemail one. Seema calls. Um, today I'm calling about operations. My op team has run Eternity Vault many, many, many times and probably will do more in the future as we bring new 50s up, et cetera, et cetera. And I love that instance, and I don't really tire of it except for the trash. My wish is that Bio- BioWare would do for ops what they have done for many of the flashpoints, which is to provide a way around huge chunks of the trash. After the social points or the legacy XP could kill everything if they wanted, and people like us who just can't bear to see another manka cat, lava dog, or tendril droid thing could shave off some of the time spent hugging those things. Bye for now. Oh, P.S. This is my favorite Sotor podcast. I love you guys. Okay. Bye for real. Oh, she loves us. <laughs> oh, we, we love her too. Slash hug, Sima. Slash hug. Yeah. <laughs> that is a great idea. Why ha- why is this not already in game? Yeah. I don't know. Good idea. Let's 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 make it well, happen. Bioware. Chop, although, chop. It is. although keep I, the keep the dogs, because I love throwing the I love guys how they jump. I know. I love how they <laughs> jump. They will jump off of anything if you give them a little push. <laughs> yeah. just, you exactly. just throw the bone off the edge of the cliff and they go jumping off. That is a yeah. I, I in all seriousness, I think that's a great idea. Um they should. Some sort of like shortcut should open up and allow you to bypass like a whole bunch of the trash, you know, and just Bring it to oh here here's the boss you just bypassed all that some of the flashpoints have like Academimu has a whole shortcut that if you can slice that cop yeah. car you bypass a whole bunch of the trash they yeah, should like, do more you know, of that. legacy knowledge my grandfather used to talk oh, about yeah. this place exactly. and there's you know, a secret a passage idea. over here that'll take us directly to the boss that's a great nice. idea <laughs> that's an awesome uh, or you know what they should build that in as a smuggler perk. Like, you know what I mean? Like, build these maps, these ops maps, with tunnels that only a smuggler can open or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, that would be kind of cool. That would be cool. All right. And now we got a phone call. We got a voicemail from this fella, Matt. Matt called. Actually, Matt didn't call. He sent us his own MP3. Hey, guys. Love the show. I'm very excited about the new HK51 companion and a little iffy on the details. The developer's Q&A says you need a level 50 and a mid-level character on the opposing faction. Uh, The video was very interesting and looks like it could be a flashpoint or some kind of operation to release him from the lost ship. What I'm really interested in finding out is the requirements to unlock him and how could they possibly tie in your two characters to the story. Thanks, guys. Ooh. Hmm. Interesting. Well, yeah, well, he's right. There has not been... That was kind of our complaint on the show last week. That was sort of my... Yeah. Like, this was a bit of a non-announcement. There wasn't a lot of info here other than, ooh, look, cool companion coming. Um, they haven't said a whole lot. You're right. You have pretty much all the info uh, correct as much as we know. Uh, yeah, you're going to need one character at cap and another on the opposite faction at about midway. Done. So, yeah, yep, yep. Like I <laughs> kind of have both covered right now as well. Um, we've known about HK, at least I know I have, and I know a lot of folks have, for a long time known about HK-51 being in the game uh, because they found him in the tray files of the game way back in beta. Um, mm. It was a quest line that just wasn't activated. Uh, so I've known oh. for a long time that he's been sort of hidden away in here. Um, I know that if you go to Hoth, I don't know where exactly, um, but there is a point where uh, there is a red shield on Hoth preventing you uh, from proceeding any further in part of a shipwreck that no one has the, cl- the quest to get past so right now. So word is is that the HK fifty ones are sort of on the other side of that shield. So um, that's all we know. Um, I don't know. Any anyone else got anything to address or add to Matt's comment? Or no, I mean that was a massive teaser trailer that they gave us at Comic Con. I don't think they're going to give us any more until this thing goes live, like yeah. the Reckle thing. 
Yeah, but now oh, again, see, you're well making... Very well done trailer, too. High production quality. <laughs> well, see, they, again, you guys uh, tying in event, event. Like, I'm not... Again, I think this is more of a quest line that's going to be a part of their story content push. I, you know? If anything, I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be, oh, it's a one-time event, you can only get them once. I'm saying yeah. they may tie it into whatever the event is. It'll event, be released probably around the same time. An event will happen tied into HK51, not HK51 as a result of an event. Correct. Yeah, gotcha. Correct. No, I agree. Like I think we said last week, and I'm beginning to think the idea is those mystery boxes that are now advertising strange things this yeah. HK 51's hiding in there they're going to assault the it's stations 51. yeah they're going to kill us all oh my god that would be a kind of awesome actually <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of well, awesome HK 51 had a degree in marketing he's running all the ads in those boxes okay and I just want to clarify <laughs> all of that I just said completely me speculating seriously I yes. could be just way out in left field and so I'm going to buy a wear nose right now and if you're listening they're laughing probably but I know, right? <laughs> but I'm guessing that's what would they, that's, that's what I would be thinking. Yeah. All right, one more voicemail before we say goodbye. Uh, let's see here. Isaac drops us a line. Oh, it's a subject near and dear to my heart. Yeah. My comment was about uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic. I enjoy crafting a lot, but I kind of get bored when I'm just sitting there crafting one thing or another. And I think they really need to add a mini game to the game, like the Zach. Where if I could play that while I was crafting, um, then I would really enjoy that because sometimes I don't feel like questing. I don't necessarily want to go do something. I just kind of want to sit there, watch TV, but feel like I'm doing something in the game as well, hang out. And so something like that would be a really nice addition. So just putting my vote for that particular feature. If we're voting, are we all voting? All, all that are in favor of mini games in the game, say aye. Aye. Aye, 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 aye. All right. So, Bioware, <laughs> you can make that happen for next week's update, right? Cool. Thanks. Yeah, now that we've good. solved that content dilemma. <laughs> I want to play Pazak from my Pod Racer Baby Swing. Oh, <laughs> boy. Jeez. Yes. See, there, there, no, he's absolutely right, though. And there was the key in there. There's something I've been thinking for a while is I want to log in, but I may not be in the mood for adventure. Adventure. With friends, without friends, however you want to go, there's lots to do. I, I know, agree. And I and I just finished Narshada and I had that you know mission where I had to go to the casino and I'm like, man, if this if these things were working, I would just be here all day. Yeah, that's just it. It would make them it would make these areas like like Narshada, the whole gambling casino area, that would just totally make those areas like very viable, usable social areas. Um we agree. We agree. This is a subject we have beat to death, and we will continue to beat to death on the show for many, <laughs> many years to come. But seriously, this show has run long. Tell you what, uh, I'm going to go in order that you're showing up in my Skype contacts right now. Mr. Jeff Villamec, uh, where can folks find you when you're not in-game killing them on a war zone? Uh my notes from the show usually, and my contact info is on newoverlords.com. Uh, how about you, Shojo? Where can uh, folks find Sarah when they want more more Sarah witticisms? More and me. trust me, there yeah. is more witticisms to be had. <laughs> witticisms, yes. Um, I'm on Twitter at Shojo AIE. I'm always twittering. Like I check this thing every five minutes, so yeah, that's where I'm at. She yeah. does. No, I do. I agree. I matter of fact, speaking of Twitter, I was just going to say it is my preferred medium. Um, I don't have enough friends. I need more followers, please. So be my friend. A T zero M X I I. It's matrix spelling for Adam 12. So in, that's the mystery behind that. Uh, oh. how, about, how about you, Duris? Where can folks well, find you? As I like to refer to it, where can they find the wisdom of the Duris? The wisdom of the Duris. Well, the Wisdom of the Duras is only available after midnight, <laughs> most nights. <laughs> kind of like a gremlin. But, uh, or he not does like come out to play at the Duras on Twitter. And, you know, there just may be a website in the future. Oh, boy. Teaser. Teaser. Speaking of websites, <laughs> we've got one, the Cantina Band. Dot com. That's right, the Cantina Band, one word. Uh, we're going to be making some tweaks, some changes. More stuff's going to be happening there very soon. Uh, I got a lot of people talking about wanting live streams. We got live, we're talking some live stuff. We're talking some produced how to stuff. We got more content coming for you. So keep an eye on the site. Uh, if you stumbled across us this week because we like to spam the Star Wars store hashtag, 
Um, mm-hmm. Subscribe. Uh, the RSS feed's right there on the show. And if you want to hear your lovely voice on the show, you can give us a call at one three three zero TCB Talk. That's eight two two eight two five five. Or if you want to do what one of our callers did today and record your own MP3, make sure you say what you want to say and you get it just right and email that as an attachment to us. We're totally fine with that too. And you can send that to the cantina band at gmail.com. Before I wrap it up, uh, I do want to throw out there. We are looking for advertisers on the show. We got some ideas. We wanted to expand the content. Uh, I'll be honest. I could totally use help <laughs> with the cost of the server <laughs> at this point. So, um, Spread the word. If you are a listener and you know someone who knows someone who might be interested in, you know, throwing an ad or two on the show, um, send them our way, would you please? We'd really appreciate it. Um, thank you. Uh, other than that, folks, anything else you guys want to say before we say bye-bye? Bye. Bye. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> All right. Ciao. See you next week, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.